So what is searching? Searching is the process of finding a specific element or group of elements within a collection of data. This is a fundamental operation in computer science used in various applications like database queries, information retrieval, and more. So the importance of searching, first, data retrieval is efficiently retrieving information from large data sets. Two, data management, organizing and managing data effectively. Three, optimization, enhancing the performance of applications by quick data access. And there's a common search algorithms. There are several searching algorithms, uh, each suited for different types of data and scenarios. But here are a few commonly used ones. The first one will be a linear search, also known as a sequential search. Uh, the concept here is to check each element of the list sequentially until the desired element is found or the list ends. For example, let's say we have 10, 20, 3, 45, 70, 11, and 15. And we're going to search for 70, starting from the beginning, checking each element one by one. So the steps here is we go to 10. Are you 70? No. Okay, cool. Go to the next one. 23. Are you 70? No. Okay. Go to the next one. Hey, 45, are you 70? No. Okay, go to the next one. Hey, 70, are you 70? Yeah, you found me. Great. So, <laughs> honestly, like the only time, I shouldn't say the only time, but generally the only time this is really useful, uh, and it works is when it works, it, it works well with small or unsort, unsorted lists. If you have small lists, just quickly go through, it's fine. It's cool. If you have unsorted lists, not sorted, so you don't have a easy way to go through it. So you're just like, okay, cool. Uh, keep going to see fine, which looks good. The second thing will be a binary search. Okay? So this requires the list to be sorted. It has to be sorted. Okay? For a binary search, it has to be sorted. Uh, this will allow you to compare the target value to the middle of the list. If they're not equal, then the half that uh, the half in which the target, the half in which the target cannot lie in is eliminated. Because it's sorted, if they're not equal, then this means that either I should go to the left because I'm less than, or I should go to the right because I'm greater than. Uh, and the search continues by with uh, so you just get rid of the half you don't need. The search continues on the remaining half repeatedly. So let's take a look at an example. So in the example here, we have a sorted list: 11, 15, 23, 45, 70. And 85, and this time let's search for 45. Okay, so we're going to search for 45 and we're going to compare it to the middle element. So if we try to cut this to six and a half, um, we will get uh, 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 three. So we'll go to the third element here. So 23 will be our middle. So I would essentially split this up into 11, 15. There's 23 that I'm checking. Then here's 45, here's 70, and here's 85. And I say, hey, 23, are you 45? And he says, no. If you look to the left of me, you'll be too small. You want to go greater. All right, cool. So the new list that we're looking at is 45, 70, and 85. And then you cut that in half. And so our half element with the 70. And so we have uh, 45. We have the 70. We have the 85, we're splitting it up. And we say, hey, 70, are you 45? And he'd say, no. And if you go to the right of me, you're too big. All right, well, then the only thing I need to look at left is this list of 45. And then we go to the middle of that. Oh, that's 45. Hey, 45, are you 45? Yes, I am, you found me. All right. Um, so the use case here is it's highly efficient with for a large sorted list. Just keep going in the middle. If it never, uh, if you got to the end, we had nothing left. We didn't find anything. Find nothing. Okay. So practical uses of sorting or searching, excuse me, finding information, it lo locating a specific context in the phone book, uh, database queries, retrieving records that match a certain criteria, uh, user interfaces, searching for items in an e-commerce platform. So in summary, searching is essential, is an essential concept in programming that allows us to quickly and efficiently find specific data within large, large data sets. And understanding these different searching algorithms and their appropriate use cases is crucial for 
developing efficient and responsive applications. Okay. Let's get more detail here. Let's take a detailed look at searching algorithms. So the two that we mentioned. So let's now let's take a deeper look at two common search algorithms. So linear search and the binary search. Okay. So the linear search in, is the simplest searching algorithm. It works on both sorted and unsorted lists. So steps of a linear search. You start at the beginning of the list, compare the target value with the current element. If the target value matches the current element, you return that index of the current element. If the target value does not match the current element, you move to the next one. And you repeat that until the target value is found or the end of the list is reached. Those are the conditions for like a while because you'll know what's going to happen. So in uh, example, so if, say I give you a list, 3, 8, 12, 5, and 6. Okay. Um, so we want to find 5. So the steps here, again, compare 5 to 3. 3 is not equal to 5. Okay, go to 8. Compare 5 to 8. Five, uh, 5 is not equal to 8. is not equal to 5. Okay, go to the next one. 12 is not equal to 5. Go to the next one. 5 is equal to 5. Return this index here. So we'll return the index of 3 because we found it. Okay. So the advantages here is simple to implement. And there's no need for the list to be sorted. Disadvantages is inefficient for a large list as it requires checking each element. So you could literally go all the way to the end. So if you have a list of size n, uh, it's n times at max. It's fine. Binary search. A binary search is more efficient, is a more efficient algorithm, but requires the list to be sorted. So steps to the binary search. Make sure it's sorted. Uh, then find the middle of the list. Then compare that target value with the middle element. And if the target value matches the middle element, return that index of the middle element. If the target value is less than the middle element, um, then you repeat on the left half of the list. Otherwise, in other words, the target value will be greater than the middle element. You repeat the search on the right half of the list. And you repeatedly do this until you find or a sub list becomes a size zero. Okay. So let's look at an example here. So we got 1, 3, 7, 15, 18, 20, 25. It is a sorted list. And we're going to look for 15. So steps, we're going to compare to the middle here. Let's find 15. Oh, God, it's in the middle. Yeah, we're done. See you much faster. Oh, okay. But the advantage is this is much more efficient than a linear or sequential search for a large list. And it reduces the problem size by half with each step. So it take at least n um, divided by two times to do it. So disadvantages. It requires the list to be sorted. But as we saw, there are many sorting algorithms that you could use to do that for you. So in summary of differences between these, a linear search is for small or unsorted lists. Um, its time complexity is called big O, so big O notation will have n, its complexity is n, where n is the number of elements, because you would, at most, have to go all the way to the end. For binary search, um, this is best for a large uh, sorted list, uh, so its time complexity is actually big O of a log n, so, um, because it is an uh, exponential change, so um, based on the number of elements, so log n. So where n is again the number of elements. Okay. So the practical considerations, choosing the right algorithm. Um, the choices between a linear and binary search will depend on the size of the state. Is it sorted or unsorted? Uh, efficiency. Binary search is significantly faster for larger data sets, but requires a pre-sorted list. Take more time to sort it and then do that, or will it be best just to go through it? Implementation. Well, both algorithms are fundamental and should be well understood as they are the basis for more advanced searching techniques. By mastering these basic searching algorithms, you can efficiently handle data retrieval tasks in your programming projects. So, happy searching. Bon appetit.